14,000 islands on the lake. It's just uh, amazing, some of the stuff that no one's ever seen. When one of my girls wants to have a sleepover, there's an international border crossing to be considered. <laughs> a lot of people would be jealous of the things we have just right on our back doors. I've always said this is the best kept secret in Minnesota. People just don't know about us. Funding for the Northwest Angle, Minnesota's Best Kept Secret, is provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008. And by the members of Prairie Public. The Angle is a unique place. There's approximately 110 to 120 permanent residents up at the Northwest Angle. Uh, it's got the only one room active schoolhouse in the state of Minnesota. It's got Fort St. Charles, it's got Massacre Island. All the different things you can do in addition to fishing, exploring the gold mines, the waterfalls, and, and then again, the wildlife. It's just an awesome place. The Northwest Angle is that little unspoken gem we have up here in Northern Minnesota. And to get there is unique because you have to go through Canada. So when you're leaving Warroad, you come up to the border here where we're at and you check in with Canada Customs. You drive through Canada and all of a sudden, as a tourist, your pavement ends and you are now on a gravel dirt road to get to the Northwest Angle. A little bit farther on the line, you cross the actual international border with Canada and the US, and we have remote check-in facilities located there. The first one is Jim's Corner. You pick up the phone and hit the American flag and it rings back to this office so you can check in your arrival back into the US. The phones that are up there, the current Oars phones, are obviously 1974 and that's a long time ago for technology-wise. So the World Port of Entry came up with the idea of upgrading that. And what we came up with is the Rollmap, Remote Offsite Arrival Mobile Application. The Rollmap allows us to have that true face-to-face -face video chat with the traveler of it. It allows the traveler to save their profile. They can put as many people as they want in the app. Whoever's in my car, I can report that arrival then without standing outside in the bugs, in the blizzard, things like that. We've since partnered with some of the resorts up there to house an iPad for us so that their guests can go right to the resort and report in. Now when customers come to our resort, if they choose, they don't have to stop at Jim's Corner, for instance. They can come right to our resort and use that iPad to report to U.S. Customs. It's a wonderful public-private partnership we have with the Northwest Angle where Office of Field Operations, Customs and Border Protection, we work very closely with the resort community and they, in turn, help us out. They call Lake of the Woods the walleye capital of the world, and for good reason. They estimate that Lake of the Woods has over 10 million walleyes and saugers. We have big walleyes, and I'll tell you what, we got them throughout the lake. Because of all the islands, we have so much good structure for fish. Not just walleyes, but multi-species. Pike, bass, jumbo perch, muskies. The whole Lake of the Woods has over 65,000 miles of shoreline. You couldn't fish it all in a lifetime. When I was in the Senate, I was chairman of the Game and Fish Committee. One of the things that had been tried for 40, 50 years was to take the nets off the Lake of the Woods. And uh, there was a group of fishermen up there that were pushing this, you know, that thought at the time you could only catch little tiny walleyes. And the fishing just wasn't good. And they, they, they blamed it on the commercial netting. The commercial netters didn't agree. So I put this in the bill and I put in a provision to buy them out. It was without a doubt the best thing that ever happened because that lake just boomed. And the fishery now is the premier walleye fishery in the world. There's why you come to Lake of the Woods. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. Look at that. Isn't that a nice fish? Here's a Lake of the Woods walleye for you. You can either fish in Minnesota waters or you can fish in Ontario waters. If you're not gonna be touching land, you can just go boat into Canada without even calling in and then you can boat back. Now, if you're gonna do a shore lunch or something, you just call the 888 Can Pass number in the morning. Just give them your boat number and what you're gonna be doing and where you're gonna be going and they'll give you a number to write down for the day. 
And people think, ooh, the winter must be cold. We well, you know it is cold up here. It gives us good, consistent ice. And not only does it give, a, give us good ice, it gives us ice earlier than anywhere else, and we have ice later than anywhere else. We typically start ice fishing right around December 10th with resort houses. And uh, we go all the way through the month of March. Much of the state of Minnesota, for instance, you can only have fish houses out on the ice until about March 1st. You know, for Lake of the Woods, we're allowed, because we're border water with Canada, to have our fish houses out on the ice through March 31st. Not only that, we have an extended walleye season. Nice walleye. You can see that's a perfect eater walleye right there. That's probably about a 15 incher baby. Our walleye and sauger season goes through April 14th. Our pike season never closes. Nice perch. Big perch, look at that. We'll take that. That's one of the great things about being up here is you never know what you're gonna catch. And this is a big jumbo. Look at that. A lot of people come to the Northwest Angle for the premier fishing. It's a fishing destination for sure. But there's so much more between the history, the culture, and just the uniqueness of the area. The area is in contest, not only prehistorically, but the area is in contest from the arrival of the British and the French in the 1600s. When it gets uh, time for the uh, American Revolution, the issue becomes who owns this piece of ground? The Treaty of Paris was uh, the document by which America gained independence from, from Britain. They identified a northern boundary. The main problem was that Lake of the Woods wasn't as simple as it was shown on the John Mitchell map. I think he makes it much more oval and when you try to find the northwest angle on the Lake of the Woods, it gets a little problematic. The border between the United States and what we would think of as Canada today is to be drawn based essentially on Mitchell's map. Well, Mitchell's map is wrong. So even though the treaty is signed and it's marked that northern border, I think pretty much everybody knows that that northern border needs a bit more work done on it. Ultimately, uh, David Thompson, who is a well-known geographer of the time, map maker, cartographer, says, in essence, I can work this out. And he, with the help of a German scholar, actually have a better understanding of the lake. And ultimately, they come up with what is the northwest corner of the Lake of the Woods. There was a treaty in 1842 that's commonly known as the uh, Webster-Ashburton Treaty. Two things got codified, that angle inlet point, and then the other thing that came out of that uh, 1842 treaty was the north-south boundary, dropping it down to uh, the 49th parallel. And that was problematic too because the 49th parallel intersects in the middle of the lake. So it means that there's a little bit of Minnesota that is cut off from the United States. It's the only piece of the United States that, that is north of the 49th parallel. Northernmost point of the contiguous United States, most people don't realize it's actually further north than Maine or Washington state. And for most of its history, the angle was only accessible uh, by airplane or across the ice in the wintertime because there was no road. The road was eventually established, so that opened up a, a lot more of the angle to especially tourism. We have about a dozen resorts up at the Northwest Angle. We have six resorts that are on the mainland called Angle Inlet. And then we have about another half dozen out on the islands. My name is Rick McKeever, and we are at Young's Bay Resort. It was a, a homestead, of, I'm guessing, in probably a hundred years ago. A fellow named Faye Young homesteaded it, and he had a a freight and passenger boat on Lake of the Woods, and he went from Oro to the islands every day. He hauled the mail and freight and gasoline, and he could haul like 50 passengers on the boat. And this was all before 1969 when the Angle Road came in. When we bought the property, we wanted to keep it original. On the maps, it was Young's Bay, so 
we call it Young's Bay, even though there's never been a Young involved in it since. The resort is, is small. It, we have uh, seven cabins, 50 beds. We basically run it with a couple of part-time people plus husband and wife. And it's been that way since the beginning. We like to keep the fishing and the experience low key. We don't guarantee limits. We don't brag about catching all these fish. We have people that's been coming here for 30 some years. They come back and say, this is the greatest vacation we ever go on. I would say roughly 90% of our customers are repeat customers. Uh, they make their reservations uh, this year for the following year and they are our best advertisement. Lake of the Woods is a notorious lake for walleyes in particular, although muskie and, and other fish are, are equally abundant. By and large, most of our customers are not primarily interested in taking a bunch of fish home. They caught fish. Any monsters? They want to come up, enjoy the scenery, catch some fish, have a marvelous shore lunch. Yeah. My favorite meal of the year. They have a nice relaxing evening, go back out the next day and do the same. Not like three or four, but we only have. When you see people come in uh, from a day of fishing or sightseeing and uh, see the smile on their faces and, and realize, yeah, they now know what the Northwest Angle is all about. We have a great relationship with the, the resorts on the angle. If we get a call uh, and we don't have availability, uh, we give them names and numbers for people to call and, and other resorts do the same. Angle Outpost Resort is a resort right on Lake of the Woods, the mainland. You can drive right up to your cabin, uh, which is our one of the main uh, conveniences that we have. It's 11 cabins right on Lake of the Woods and it is a fishing resort. Scoop them up. Overall, I think it's, a, it's a good living. I like working for myself. I like the kids being involved in the, in the family business. It's like this family fits in perfectly with the resort. You would think that we had created the resort for us, but really we just slipped in and everybody's always had a perfect job for them to do. I think it's a great way to raise a family and raise kids. I think it's like growing up on a farm is how I explain it to people. You know, those kids learn at a young age to, you know, run around on golf carts, cleaning cabins, etc. Jojo, Adley, and Emma are our bed makers. I think their record is 75 beds in a day. Um, they're, they're pretty fast. I might hear from our guests all the time at how nice our kids are and how polite they are and how well they work. and. And that's a great compliment to me and my wife. So we change this to three. And then number four says, after that number. My name is Linda Lamy. I teach at the Angle Inlet School at the Northwest Angle. No. Why would I give you an easy one after all these hard things? Our school is the most northerly school in the contiguous U.S. We're the last one-room public school in the state of Minnesota. I started my teaching career in uh, 1981, and I taught school at the War Road School for four years. And at that time, I thought uh, I would like to experience a different grade level, and I talked to the principal about doing such, and he said, Linda, do I ever have a place for you? I came up in 1985, and I have been here ever since. When I first started teaching at the Angle, uh, the Angle Inlet School was kindergarten through eighth grade. There were two years that the school was closed, 1992 to 1994, due to lack of enrollment. In 1994, when the Angle School reopened, it, it reopened as a K through six school, and then the seventh through 12th graders uh, had to go on the bus to War Road each day and back. 
you're a child at the Northwest Angle living on the island, your day starts really early and you're going to be boating across or snowmobiling across the ice and you still have over an hour bus ride to get down here to school. And Dale Wester and from Warroad come up to the Northwest Angle to pick the students up and bring them to school in Warroad. He's an unsung hero to the community of Warroad and the community of the Northwest Angle. He's, he's ultimately responsible to get up way too early drive a school bus all the way to the Northwest Angle, go through that entire check-in process with Canada Customs, U.S. Customs and Border Protection, gather all those kids up. Good morning. And then they had to stop at Jim's Corner where they reported to Customs. Stop here and call into the U.S. Customs. Dale Westover. And then on the return, would go through Canadian Customs and then Customs again up here at the Angle. So those students going into War Road had to go through customs four times, <laughs> four times a day. Not only that, but he's doing it during the blizzard and doing adverse weather conditions. I talked to the custom agents about eight times a day. He probably has one of the longest bus routes in probably the United States, I would have to say. Start up the bus a little before four o'clock. It's quarter to eight when we drop them off. He's definitely over a two-hour commute up and back twice a day. Dale does his things and makes sure that they get here safe. The years have really changed. When I first moved up to the Angle, um, we had no telephones. So we had a Marine Band radio that was always turned on. And so we would hear the, the boat traffic and you know where people were catching fish or if Irene Peterson had just taken cinnamon rolls out of the oven and she would get on the Marine Band. So it's really changed. Every student has a new Chromebook. They have this access which really um, makes their education really well-rounded. This is finish each sentence, read each naming. In the beginning I thought I would be here for a year or two, um, but just came to love the community, the people, the children of this beautiful place. The Northwest Angle is pretty unique, amazing, some of the stuff that no one's ever seen. But over the last 20 years, most every weekend, out just exploring things from old maps, old newspaper articles, just anything I could find. Why not share everything? So I created a Lake of the Woods exploring app. If they want to see gold mines, if they want to see pictographs, petroglyphs, good shore lunch spots, if they want to find good fishing spots, there was one place to go and it kind of added another dimension of why to come up to Lake of the Woods. It's a very unique area to live in. The challenges I think have gotten a lot easier with technology and the internet. And I can't imagine living here in the 60s or 50s or the 40s. Even, you know, there wasn't a road back then even. I think I was about eight years old when uh, we moved out. Probably 1947, I think it was, something like that. I lived on Oak Island, Minnesota for most of my life. It was a different life. It was really remote, you know, and difficult up there. There was no power, kerosene lights and gas lights, and dad was a commercial fisherman and a logger, and, and that's the way life was. And then we went to school here at, at Oak Island. And during the 40s, I guess, they cut commercial fishing off the lake pretty much north of the Four Block Islands, which were some little islands on, on the south side of Oak Island. And then the people had to move out of there because they couldn't make a living. So he had to move out. And then he bought an island over about 10 miles over. And then that's where we lived in the summertime. So the fishing just eased out and then tourism came in. And in 1974, the electricity came to the island. Then people started buying homes up there and, and moving in, you know, summer people. When the snowmobiles came in, that made a real difference in our lives. One of the great activities to do in the wintertime, and it gets overlooked because of the great fishing at Lake of the Woods, is snowmobiling. 
we actually have two different snowmobile clubs that groom and stake trails throughout the, the whole Lake of the Woods County and beyond. The name of the club is Northwest Angle Edge Riders. The trails on the land are just gorgeous. They're going through some of the most beautiful landscape you'd ever imagine. They're wide, they're groomed. You'll see wildlife, it is just nirvana. It's good for the economy, the community, it's fantastic. Take this coming weekend now, if it's gonna be nice, you'll have probably a couple hundred sleds in the area, maybe more. And every one of them stops someplace up here. You know, there's a lot of ways to get around um, on Lake of the Woods in the winter. And, you know, one of the ways, of course, is snowmobile. But, you know, another way, because we have such, you know, uh, good ice, is ice roads. So we actually have people that will plow these ice roads, and they plow them real wide. The only uh, thing we got to worry about this time of year is going up next to shore, because there's so much snow that the snow actually will insulate the ice. If you're staying at one of our island resorts, when you come off the mainland at Young's Bay Resort, you know, you can actually get on a real wide ice road and there'll be real good signs on there telling you, you know, which resort is where. And you can just follow that ice road. It's almost like a little highway. You follow that out maybe five to eight miles. You can drive up right into the resort, drive right next to your cabin and life is good. A lot of people would come up to the Northwest Angle and try to take a picture. Oftentimes the picture was next to a road sign or something that really wasn't meaningful. So the local group got together and looked at different options. And one of the things they looked at was the Key West buoy. Key West has a buoy that kind of symbolizes the most Southern spot of the US. So that the kind of the idea was have a similar buoy up in the Northern parts. The people that come up to the angle just to take a picture of the most Northern spot, that seems to be the best place to, to take the pictures from what we've had in the past. We are at Lake Trails Base Camp. Lake Trails is located on the very southern tip of Oak Island. Technically, we're called Oak Point. Lake Trails began in 1952, and it started with a vision of Father Bill Merkins. He wanted to start a camp for teenagers where they could go and explore the wilderness. They started doing really very similar to what we're doing today. They went out on canoe trips and just started exploring the area. If a kid signs up for lake trails, the whole experience lasts nine days. And so the first day is mostly getting here. Kids ride a bus that starts down in the Twin Cities and um, comes all the way up to Young's Bay, picking kids up along the way. We meet them at Young's Bay with our boats, get them out to the island and they check in the second day is kind of a crash course in everything we want them to learn. And at some point during the day, uh, the group will go paddling and really get that experience of being on the water and uh, pushing the water around with your paddle. I remember when Father Bill told the story of when the camp first started, people said, you'll never make it, you can't. Other people have tried you cannot paddle canoes on this lake. It's too windy, it's too dangerous. You just can't do it, Nobody, you're not gonna make it. And here we are getting close to 70 years later and, and I was just think, take that, we're still here, we've made it. <laughs> They're fine there for now. The real heart of the program starts on day three. That's when you start to see, I start to see kind of some nervousness sometimes, um, some excitement, a little apprehension once in a while, especially for kids that have never been here before. They're not necessarily sure what they've gotten themselves into, <laughs> which I think is great. You know, a little uncertainty is, is good for a person sometimes. Oh, Fishermen! Oh, From the moment they leave the beach, we just call it trail magic or the lake trails magic, and it's just amazing what happens when they're out on trail. My very favorite part is watching them leave and then fast forward five days and watching them return. And the transformation is amazing. And the, the real magic is that that whole time, this lovely community is forming. They learn that they're way more capable than they probably gave themselves credit for. And that's, that's really the heart and soul of, of lake trails is that canoe trip. They come back and, oh my gosh, the stories begin immediately when they get out of the canoes. They, that's a, 
I think, a really powerful part of the whole experience because kids really share deeply what this has all meant to them. I have a guest every year he comes, he gestures towards the lake and he tells me to come and look at this. And so I come and look at it every year through his eyes and it helps me see it fresh and new. And that's what I like the most about it because if you keep your head down, you miss out on what's around you and that people would come from really all over the world to see this area. And then I tell them, wait till you get out on the lake, this is nothing. <laughs> To order a DVD copy of The Northwest Angle, Minnesota's Best Kept Secret, visit our online store at shopprairiepublic.org or call 1-800-359-6900. Funding for The Northwest Angle, Minnesota's Best Kept Secret, is provided by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4th, 2008 and by the members of Prairie Public.